Since the very beginning when I started making parkour content on here, I've always had friends and family commenting, you're gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna break an ankle. Even when I was doing simple things like standing prees at nine feet. And now I'm starting to find challenges that actually could injure me and are pretty dangerous. And now I get comments like, are you stupid? To which I say, yes, but that's not the reason I'm doing these challenges. So today we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper and discuss the topic on whether dangerous challenges are worth the risk. been following the channel for a while you know that these pole strides are a challenge that I found very very early in starting to train and I've just recently started working up to getting the strides on them if you follow me on Instagram you know because I have posted a few progressions on my stories and they're a tricky one mainly because each of the poles have a lip around them one um, so they're not perfectly flat, which makes it a little unusual as you land you have some uneven surfaces that you have to deal with and Two the grade of the poles change throughout the challenge. So at the beginning all the poles are kind of going slightly downhill But then they start turning to the left and start going uphill and then they turn towards the right at the end still going uphill so it's a directional nightmare. You have to be ready for those direction changes. Essentially, you have to think two steps ahead um, of the pole that you're on. And all in all, it's, it's a scary challenge. It's tough, especially towards the end. The thing that sucks is I already got it once. Two moms passed by with their kids in strollers, told me I need to put on a helmet, and then they said, well, we wanna see it. So I did it, but guess what? The GoPro overheated and didn't catch it. Thanks a lot, GoPro. Fix your shit. I think it's because of the media mod on it. It's only like 80 degrees outside and it's still overheating. one on that last one. Whew. Now when it 
it comes to danger-based challenges, do I think that everybody should be doing challenges that if they mess up or fail, they can seriously injure themselves? No, I don't think so. But what I do think is that everybody should be progressing their challenges based on fear. Fear and danger are very different things. Fear is a scale that changes person to person. I just happen to be in a position where my skill set is starting to open up challenges that most people would consider dangerous and would look at and be like, there's no way I can do that without getting hurt. And the truth of the matter is they are dangerous. And when I am up there or getting ready to prepare these challenges, I do have fear. And this goes on to the next point that fear is your best friend. jumps here but just being here and walking around it's good for your mind there's not a chance like I'm gonna fall I'm just walking I could walk on the rails at that spot I was at last week but just being up at this height it messes with your head a little bit just walking on these beams and getting used to it it's something that you know people don't need to do but I think it's good for you want to do it here straight down that I've got the tech I mean it's really only a couple moves per level I'm just going down dropping to the big pillar holding getting down to the rail but like I said it's all about that fear and I have never done a descent really not like this but this is a good I think beginner descent because you have nice pillars around the outside that you can drop to and it just makes life a lot easier. rumbled before we could get it we'll be back over the weekend it's a good beginner one so we'll come get it done you're good man i'm yeah, leaving you're in great shape, my oh. <laughs> it's a great shape that, uh, thanks but I think can't get hurt, it's insurance and it's well the insurance stuff it all comes down to if i get hurt i come after you guys which isn't the case that, that's but, not what i'm here for I'm, yeah you don't look like you're homeless no <laughs> yeah. no. Still, I, no 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 yeah. I understand, I, I get it, but just know I'll probably be back at some point. Uh, yeah, I do parkour content. We deal with a lot of homeless people around here. Which I understand here in downtown, which I get. And I've had a lot of people, they're like, you need to get out of here. I don't see you, the camera should catch you, but I'm not here, so I'm good. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Have a good one. I didn't tell you that I I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Can't complain about that. I understand their concern. He was just like, he's like, oh, you know, we get a lot of homeless people. I'm like, dude, <laughs> if I look homeless, then we can have another talk, but I'm pretty sure I don't look homeless. So even he said, he's like, come back after hours when he's not there, he doesn't care. I had the tech. 
I, I was getting ready to go to the top and he, and he said something. Damn, dude. We'll be back for it because I think that's a great, great start for descents. Um, and like I said, I've never done descents, so be a good challenge. And I have the tech down, so I just have to get comfortable with it and take her to the top. These strides here are spaced two feet further than the tall poles that we practiced on this morning. So I wanna see if I can get these comfortably. And if so, there's not really any reason you can't do the other ones. They do have the weird lip thing though, but I mean, that's just something you have to work with. said before fear will keep you safe fear is your best friend when you introduce fear into training like this your mind takes over now I know that my body has no issues accomplishing a lot of these challenges but my mind addresses the situation and without me really knowing can tell if I'm ready for that specific challenge and it's really hard to explain and I've tried explaining this before and especially to people that don't understand the sport nor have ever put themselves in positions with that fear a lot of people don't understand it when you're standing up over a challenge whether it be something over a death drop or up on those poles where I'm wanting to stride one foot at a time you can feel a switch in your mind when you go from the fear of knowing that you aren't ready to the confidence of your mind saying yeah you're good to go you've done everything in your power to prepare for this so i have no problem with it do your thing but your mind is like any other muscle in your body you have to condition it and if you don't address challenges that are scary you're never going to be able to do those scary challenges so right now, I'm gonna show you guys a challenge that is probably one of the easiest physical challenges I have found, but is very scary to me. So I found this pre one day while I was out riding my bike around and I shared it over on my Instagram story. So if you're not following me over there, what are you doing, eh? Get over there. I share all kinds of little sneak peeks and behind the scenes when I'm out looking for challenges. And I found this one, shared it, and there's a few guys in the community that I think could do it here, but it really scares me. And here she is. It's a little eight foot free. There's some definite consequence. The ultra wide on the camera yeah. really doesn't do this justice, but I mean, it's a pretty good drop. You've got six inches there to land that free. You can't bounce it. You bounce it, you're going down here. You overshoot it, it's okay. I mean, most people could take that drop-ish. I don't want to, but you guys get the gist. Terrifying, to me. To me, anyways. Even just standing on it, I, and I've explained this before, Usually when you're standing on a challenge like that and you're, you're there looking at it, the landing can do one of two things, right? That landing is either gonna start pushing away from you and you get kind of the vertigo effect. And that's a clear sign in your mind that you're not ready for it. Or it starts coming closer to you and you can almost reach out and grab it. That is a sign that you're ready for that challenge. I'm not ready for this. And like I said, physically, it's not much. So I'm gonna pace it out here, put a marker, and just do some preps, you know, just to, to see what the jump feels like. I already know what the pre feels like power-wise, but with those consequences, you can't overshoot, you can't undershoot. So it really makes the challenge very difficult. been an overshoot the other thing is too I don't even want to walk out there 
You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to walk out there and feel feel it out because the drop is terrifying to me. It, it scares me a lot. These height-based challenges like this are something I'm not really interested in. Obviously, like, if something like this comes along and I know I'm capable of it, like, I'll start kind of messing around. But I've been doing this less than a year. And that kind of precision takes some people years to work up to. I know my limits. I'm smart. I'm not going to try anything that I'm not comfortable with. And this, I'm not comfortable with. So there's no point for me trying to do it until I am. And that's what I want people to understand. Like this is a very dangerous challenge here. Even overshooting, like you have rocks down there that you could land onto, but probably a 15 to 18 foot drop, I think. Like, I don't wanna take that. I think one thing that really has helped me look at these challenges and know whether I'm ready or not is my age. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of people, a lot of younger people that get into the sport in their teen years feel invincible and they, they do things that are very dangerous. And I've heard a few people talk about this before that young teenage parkour athletes think they can do anything without any repercussions, which sometimes can lead to very serious injuries. Now in my life, I've had injuries that have essentially crippled me. Um, I've had a herniated disc in my back, which prevented me from really even walking for up to three months. And I know there are things that could hurt me indefinitely. So now at my age, like I know how to look at situations and address them properly to know whether I can do it or not. And it all comes down to that. Danger isn't really the thing in question here because there are people that walking upstairs is dangerous for them. Really, this all comes down to knowing yourself, knowing your mental capabilities and just trusting your instinct. hurting pretty bad it's been a long day out doing stuff so I don't want to push it too bad and it's pretty pretty tender right now bending it so we're gonna hold off go home ice it be smart about it I really did want to break that today but now it's not a mental thing and it's a physical thing my calf is cramped up really bad right now super tight and my knee is definitely not feeling the greatest so we're gonna call it head home get some ice on stuff and see how she feels over the weekend all in all is another good day of training and back to the topic you know do I think that dangerous challenges are, are worth the risk it all depends on the person right some people may look at a challenge and not really think it's dangerous because they're comfortable with their skills. Other people walking upstairs is a challenge for them. So just get used to knowing what your body's capable of and then also what your mind is capable of. Because at the end of the day, if your mind isn't ready, you probably shouldn't be doing that challenge. You guys know the drill. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Check out the shirts down in the description. Have a good week, have a good weekend, get out there, do some training, and I'll see you in the next video.